Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, that's enough news for tonight. I don't like hearing news. Nobody ever has anything nice to say. What time is it? Didn't you hear the announcer? Oh, I, I just got in on the end, on the o'clock part. Did he say eight or nine? Listen in an hour from now and you'll find out. Oh, come on, tell me now. What will you give me for it? How's this? Mm-hmm. Want another? Save it for next time you ask me what time it is. All right. Right now it is uh, eight o'clock. Is that all? You sound disappointed. I am. It's much too early to go to bed. Besides which, I'm not sleepy. Two good reasons. Uh, hand me that book, would you, darling? Don't you ever get tired of architecture. Give me another 50 years. Oh, 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 and your pipe. Don't you want your pipe? Or are you tired of that, too? I'm not tired of anything. As a matter of fact, I feel remarkably spry, considering... Considering what? Just considering. Now, now, let me see. What can I do for an hour... In an hour, we can go to bed, can't we, David? Still be very early. I know. Maybe we uh, ought to go out tonight. What for? Mm, go out. Don't you like to go out? Mm, yes, but I like staying home, too. That's the time to go out. There'll be plenty of time, darling, when we're on the farm to spend evenings at home. There'll be nothing else to do but go to bed early. That'll be nice. Except on the farm, we'll have to get up earlier, too. Early to bed. And early to rise. Makes a contented cow. These cows are really on your mind, aren't they? Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> nope, my mind's made up. We shall go out tonight. Where to, David? Well, where does a person go when he goes out? Well, this person doesn't go out much because this person is married to a person who doesn't go out much either. So this person doesn't know. Well, most persons go to nightclubs when they go out. Nightclubs? You say that as if it's the first time you pronounce the word. Nonsense. It's just as it's the first time you've said nightclub seriously. Well, I think we ought to go out to one. Maybe our last chance for a while. You mean because of the baby coming? I mean because of the great migration of the Nortons to Connecticut. <laughs> you make it sound <laughs> as if we're going to travel in a covered wagon. Oh, that reminds me. If we don't get a hold of a moving van pretty soon, we probably will. You really want to? What? Travel in a covered wagon? No, silly. Go to a nightclub. Yes, I, I think I really do. My jaw has just dropped. Well, pick it up and tell me what you think of the idea. <clears throat> I'm thinking. My suggesting this tonight, darling, has two purposes. I suspected as much. I'm just using a little psychology. Sure you want to tell me what it is? I mean, maybe psychology doesn't, doesn't work as well when you know it's being done to you. This psychology is just as much for me as it is for you. It's a known fact about human nature that when a person can't have something, that's when a person wants it most. You know, we're certainly talking about an awful lot about persons tonight. <laughs> David, are we that kind of a person? You most certainly are. I thought you said this psychology's for you, too. Well, it affects me. I know just as sure as anything that the minute you get up in the country and tie that sunbonnet on your head, you'll have the most terrific yen to go to a nightclub. Look, darling, just because you feel like you feel tonight. You don't have to blame it on psychology and me. Oh, you think you're very smart, don't you? Mm, very smart. Well, you, you are. Just wait till Mama hears that. I don't think I'd mind recapturing my youth for one evening. You didn't know that I was a very gay, gay young blade in my day, did you? You were? Mm. How about were you a sharp blade, too? No, oh, two edged. <laughs> well, I've just met one edge of you so far. The edge is to stay at home. I like it. Oh, just wait. Wait until you have a slice at the other edge. I like bacon with my edge. Ooh. And Mrs. Norton, I'll have you know that I'm not accustomed to co coaxing the young ladies to go out with me. When David Casanova Norton extends an invitation... Claudia Cleopatra Norton accepts it. My arm, madame. My hand, my lord. That settles it, Cleo. We're off to a nightclub. <laughs> right, Cassie, but which one? Aye, that's the rub. To go... Or not to go. We have decided to go. Aye, that, that's not the rub. No, it isn't. But to which? Zounds to which? Whether it be the nightclub on East 54th Street, or whether it be Bristol on West 57th, tis blood that is heavy <laughs> on me mind. 
shall I? Oh, which is more crowded? You ham without the lettuce. Ah, now you prefer ham with your edge. Ah! But seriously, David, listen. Aren't the bistros and the nightclubs and the pubs and the cafes just going to be jammed tonight? Madame, they will be packed, stifling, crowded beyond belief. There will be room for you to set foot no place but on your most ardent suitor's ear. Ear, ear, it sounds exciting. Twill be, twill be. I didn't know you liked dancing on a postage stamp. I wrote a letter today to my congressman. Oh, congratulations. Darling, we'll have to make up our minds where we go before we start out now. You are so right, and that is the gentleman's responsibility. Ah, alas. <laughs> <laughs> Which nightclub is your favorite? <laughs> Apartment 12C. Mine, too. But we're going out, remember? Of course I remember. Mm. I'm going to look at this list of nightclubs in the newspaper just to refresh my memory, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Now, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. see, too. There's one that sounds nice, the Oasis. I'm not thirsty. How about this one, the Zombie? Mm, I don't think I feel like a zombie tonight. Now, you don't look like one, either. I don't thank you very mm. much. Hey, David, here's a place that sounds wonderful. Look what it says. What does it say? The Village Voodoo. Ooh. Featuring the exotic singer Dolores O'Brien. I think the Dolores is the exotic part. And the O'Brien is the singer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, David, why do I have to be born in the name like Claudio? Why couldn't I have been a Dolores or a Sonia or a Lucia? Because you're just a Claudia. Is that good? Good enough for me. Still, I wish there were a little of Dolores in me. Well, what about it? You want to go to the village voodoo, Dolores? I would. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> you're playing the wrong part, darling. What do you mean? You're not the comedian. You're the audience. Oh, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. But I was just trying to get my money's worth. How did you ever get to be such a bargain hunter? I wonder. I, I think know. you were born in a basement. Well, you better ask Mama. I don't remember. You were alive then, don't you remember? Come to remember, I do. That was the day the skies grew black at noon. The sun shone at midnight. The earth rocked and shivered, and the mountains howled. Was the weather bad, too? <laughs> you were never satisfied. Now, come on, come on, come on. We've got to decide where we're going. It's getting late. Uh, how about this place? The Harlequin, huh? It's a nice name for a nightclub, don't you think? Featuring Tommy Tombstone. Tommy Tombstone? Who's mm -hmm. he? Don't. Oh, Claude, don't. Tell me that you never heard of Tommy Tombstone. Never? Tommy Tombstone with the velvet lacks. Oh, him. Mm. The singer who wears the polka dot tie. That's he. And the beret? That is the one. And who's so thin you can practically see through him? You hit him on the nose. Mm. Say, when did you last see Tommy Tombstone? Never. Never? Well, everybody knows all about him. Even me. I. You too? Oh, no, Claudia, not that again. Oh, you don't want to hear him again? Again? I never have. Well, then why'd you just say you... I didn't say anything. Let's forget the whole thing. Tommy Tombstone, too? He's he's all the rage, you know. Of course, I know. You want to go hear him? Well, no, I, I don't want to swoon. The ladies love him. This lady's busy loving someone else, thank you. Do you think you could love a man who sings like this? My dream <laughs> of Jeannie with the light. <laughs> Hair. I do love a man who sings like Brown that. <laughs> then we'd better not go to the Harlequin. You're right. One man who sings like that is enough for any family. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I know just the place. Where? The Hacienda. <gasps> yeah. The Hacienda. Mm. That sounds as if you know how to rumba. Well, who said I didn't know? When I was a child, my mother couldn't get me to stop doing the rumba. <laughs> doing the rumba. Listen. Listen. There must be a better way of saying that. Is it rumbering? Darling, or... the best way to say it is to do it. Now, come on. Leave us Roomba into the bedroom and change into our evening clothes. You mean we're going to get all dressed up? Of course. <laughs> in white ties? Mm, and a few other things. I, I didn't know you still had to get dressed up to go to a nightclub. Well, it helps. Who? Well, it might help us get a table. Wouldn't it help more if we called up and made a reservation? That's against my principles. Oh, principles. I don't see what principles have to do with a table. You'll never get a table by just walking in and saying you want one. Then we'll bring one along with us. The square one that folds its legs up underneath itself like an Indian? Mm, yes, the squaw table. <gasps> and if you get yourself very dressed up, looking stunning, <laughs> really stunning, we'll make such an impression on the head waiter that he'll be sure to give us a table. 
So that's it. That's it. David, do you suppose the head waiter gets all dressed up just so he makes an impression on us? I can't think of a better reason. This is getting exciting. I'm getting so I even like the idea of going out. And I don't care how crowded the place is or whether we ever get a table or if the head waiter snubs us. We're going to have a wonderful time. Hey, you sound as if you were trying to convince yourself. Do I? Mm -hmm. I don't see why I should. I'm all convinced. I know just what I'm going to do. Now, let me see. What have I got to wear? Let me see, let me see. Every time you open that closet, you act as if you were reading a menu. Now, here is just the thing. One crepe de chine on toast. It's got a nice low back, lace on the front, and it reaches all the way down to the floor. Sounds lovely. Have I seen you in it? Oh, loads of times. What color is it? Pink, and it's satin. Satin? I like satin. It's very dressy. David, how does this look on me? Darling, that is a nightgown. Is it? Well, what do you know? But it's uh, very becoming. Do you like it? Mm. Mm, yes. Good. Then I'll wear it. Very good idea, darling. And, and here's what I'll wear. The striped ones. I always like you best in the striped ones. You think we'll make an impression on the head waiter in these? <laughs> we'll make an impression, all right. I know. <laughs> Oh, darling, your psychology was marvelous. I'm not going to feel like going to a nightclub for ages. I'm coming home so late, I'm so sleepy I could go right to bed. Yeah, I'm sleepy, too. I guess he was doing all that Roomba in a smoke-filled room. I guess so. And wasn't it packed? I couldn't even find that postage Neither stamp. could I. David, thanks. I've had a wonderful evening. Just suppose you had a job outside instead of at home. In all likelihood, there'd be a Coca-Cola cooler right where you worked. And you'd use it, too, as millions of working folks do. Well, the fact is, you work just as hard. Chances are even harder than people do in offices and factories. So why not give yourself the benefit of the pause that refreshes? See that there's always Coke on ice so that you can open a bottle when you feel like it during your household working hours and work refreshed. Hey, uh, sorry to disturb you, Joe, but are you and your wife great night clubbers? Well, I think we feel just about the same way about them as you and Claudia, David. No matter how much we try, we just never seem to get there, do we? Well, maybe you don't want to try hard enough. Maybe. I guess the joke is on us. Say, that reminds me. Tomorrow's the 1st of April, isn't it? Mm, that's right. April Fool's Day. It gives me an idea. I'll have to think up something. What could I do to play a joke on Claudia, Joe? Mm, well, that is something to think about. Do me yeah. a favor, Joe. Don't remind Claudia that tomorrow is the 1st of April. Hmm? I'll bet you she remembers all by herself. As Claudia would say, I'll bet you 20 cents. Well, I better put on my thinking about it. Goodbye, Joe. <laughs> Goodbye, David. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. Claudia has come to most of you now for the past six months. We'd welcome any suggestion or anything you may wish to say about the show. Write to Claudia, Post Office Box 173, Church Street Station, New York 8, New York. Now, let me repeat the address. Post Office Box number 173, Church Street Station, New York 8, New York. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 